Welcome back! We're looking for something to extend our reach so we can push those two buttons simultaneously. Maybe the uh, replicator will help us. It's called Mr. Soylent. Reference to uh, Soylent Green, of course. It's people, I tell you! This is 8 Rear. The oh. This sign and the menu screen attached indicate that this is a Mr. Soylent food replicator. It makes you wonder what kind of kickback Starcon is receiving for this blatant plug. A friendly Mr. Soylent food replicator stands in wait to serve anyone who wants a snack. Technically, these aren't replicators. They're wormholes into the restaurant universe. But the food still tastes replicated because the chefs in the restaurant universe are mostly ex-monolith burger employees and know nothing about food. That's an interesting technology. Maybe it can provide us with something that uh, we can use to push those buttons? Actually, no, it can't, but it can provide us with a lot of funny messages and a pretty big WTF, uh, WTF moment. So let's take a look at it anyway. This is the screen used to display the numbers as you enter them. Impressive technology. This is the replicator hatch, a sliding door behind which is hidden the vortex resonance coils and the molecular soilentization generator. This access panel contains the food replicator's resonance flux shield. This access panel contains the food replicator's transwarp field stabilizer. This access panel contains the food replicator's quantum inhibitor conduit. That's a lot of technical details about something that serves absolutely no purpose in the game. No, you don't need the replicator for anything. The access panels are all tightly sealed to keep people who don't know what they're doing away from the controls. Yes, people like you. Oh. You shouldn't try to open this door by tugging on it. You'll strip the gears just like you did to the replicator in your quarters. Figures. This world's a great big ball of dirt with 50 billion souls Who like to sit around and veg down in the dark like moles But me, I'm just the kind of girl who loves the open air And bits of unburned hydrocarbons blowing through my hair New soil is clear, at last it's here with clearly better taste Less people, too, like me and you, and less reprocessed waste. More hearty crunch for snacks or lunch, it's crystal clear to see. New soil and clear, the last frontier for folks like you and me. New soil and clear, clearly less people, clearly more taste. Right, let's not do that again. I think you can actually talk to some of this stuff as well. Access panel, I command you to open. Not surprisingly, the access panel doesn't open. But it does appear to glance your way, give you a who made you the boss look, then shrug and glance away with a superior attitude. Or was that all in your mind? Either way, messed up. Replicate. I command thee. You have no power here. Apparently. Open up in there. Guess there's, there's no one in there. Access panel? Not surprising. Oh. Or was that... All of the panels give the same message. This one too, I think. Access panel? Yeah. Not surprising. Or was that... What is this one, actually? This access panel contains the food replicators. Uh, mm, uh, the thing that keeps the... Uh, uh, well, it's got this lever with this other thing connected to it. Uh, uh, anyway, it keeps the replicator from getting the... Um, uh, um, uh, never mind. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Anyway, uh, you can actually enter numbers here. It sure doesn't. But most of them uh, actually do nothing. I can, for instance, uh, enter the number for um, coronium plant from the computer. 
It sure does. Shut up. It sure. Which is harder than it looks. But nothing happens. In fact, the only code that does anything, as far as I know, is not a code from the game. It is, in fact, the code from Bjorn, uh, for Bjorn Chow from the demo of Space Quest 6. Yes, Space Quest 6 had a demo, which was not just a couple of puzzles from the game. It actually had its own little thing. And th there you get to use a replicator and use it to create some Bjorn Chow to distract some Bjorn. So, uh, it should. let's try that code, which I happen to have handy here. 7469410. Hmm, something tells me you're thinking of the demo. Demo? Yeah, you remember, the demo that had more version numbers than the game? Uh, yeah, that demo. You want this stuff? Maybe we should relegate the Roger Wilco character to demo-only status for the next game. You did have a brother, didn't you? Perhaps his IQ broke double digits. I don't think I actually want that stuff. Never mind. Okay, nice little easter egg there. I think that's about it. Um... Well, we're still no closer to opening the shuttle bay door, but maybe Circuit Sydney here can help us. After all, the description did say he was our friend, so maybe he can give us a hand. Hello, Roger. Please join me in consuming something. Thanks, Sydney. You seem uptight. Say what? Upright? What are you talking about, Sydney? Uptight was the word. Perhaps that is too archaic a reference for you. It would have been more effective to say that you seem concerned. Oh, yeah. I, I do have a thing or two. Uh, well, at least something on my mind. I am sorry to hear this. I hope your concerns are soon alleviated. Thanks, Sid. I do have to come up with some solutions. You know, I know that uh, he's probably supposed to be uh, a reference to Data, but if you ask me, he reminds me more of Crichton from Red Dwarf. Sydney, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. Flame away, Roger. You know I'd give you my right appendage if you needed it. Funny you should say that, Sydney. I kind of have this situation where that very item could come in handy. Really? Well, I was merely saying that uh, metaphorically. You really are a great friend, Sydney. That'll come in real handy. I can't thank you enough, Sydney. Well, if you really are seriously in need of it, I suppose I could lend it to you. You will get it right back to me, won't you, Roger? Sure, of course. No problem. Oh, yeah. You bet your nut flanges, Sydney. We got us an extra arm. Let's see if we can open the uh, shuttle bay door with that. Uh, back to the shuttle bay entrance. two guards are still passed out, and I think they will stay that way. So, let's push the button on the right, and then use Sydney's arm to push the other button. That is one seriously reinforced entrance. Wow, there's a lot of shuttles here. 
This large, well-ventilated shuttle bay is probably the largest single room on the ship. Which is why you can often find Andorian megopeds playing hacky sack in here. I don't know what that is, and I don't think I want to. Hey, that shuttle looks familiar. Some guy wearing a Delco air filter on his face parked this shuttle. That sounds like a certain chief engineer I know of. Ooh, a mint-conditioned 57 Gateway Bel Air with mag thrusters, overhead lifters, and four pod barrels. This baby is a sleek streak Corsair with push-button tranny and dual airbags. These balsa wood shuttles are really maneuverable, but they don't last two seconds in a phaser battle. Who would build a shuttle out of balsa wood? Just by the way, there's another familiar looking shuttle on the left here. You hear a disembodied voice saying, Remember your parking space, Luke? But it's an Imperial shuttle, unless it's the one they stole in uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. This Kiapian runabout strikes fear into the heart of the Japaxian Empire. It's a good compact shuttle for under 8,500 buckazoids. Wait, are you trying to sell it to me? He's waxing the ship. Good service they have here. What's this place up here? This workstation allows manual control of the shuttle airlock and other functions, most of which are routinely handled automatically by the ship's computers. They're incomprehensible to you, so don't even fool with them. All right. What, they don't have a droid here to do it? They actually do the, the sensible thing and have the computer handle it? This Tiberian skimmer may look intimidating, but it's seriously underpowered. And that clear steel compound cockpit is particularly vulnerable to meteorites, baryon radiation, and large insects. This is the hatch leading into the Starcon shuttle. And something tells me that's the one we're going to have to use. Namely the fact that that's the shuttle that's on the box of the game. What a beauty! A true museum quality McKinley Ultramarine Blue Runner! It will be mine. Oh yes. It will be mine. In your dreams! Denied! Some woman driver parked her shuttle here and contaminated the whole deep ship with these acid-bleeding, multi-jawed, exoskeletal aliens, and you had a really huge mess to clean up. Just for that, Kielbasa refused to validate her parking slip. <laughs> That's, uh... Not really punishment fitting the crime. I guess these are refueling uh, stations or something. They've got uh, water, oxygen, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide. This refueling pillar signifies parking section F8. Instead of F8, this post used to have a picture of a large cartoon mouse, but Starcon removed it after being threatened with legal action by the same company that lost its shirt on Androma Disney, the first amusement park on Andromeda. And another one. This support is labeled F9 so that entities can easily find where they park their shuttles, pods, runabouts, and other mini-ships. The deep ship's shuttle has a reserved spot in this row. Well, we'll see if we can use one of these sh uh, shuttles on the quest to rescue Seller in the next video.